Hi, uh, my name is Jack Ledebor. I'm a part-time employee of the Phillies doing tours uh, several days a week. And I'd like to welcome you to the Citizens Bank Park, uh, home of the Philadelphia Phillies. And I hope that you will come and see us sometime, about, not only for a ball game, but also for a, another, a tour, which we do throughout the year. It's hard for me to believe that this ballpark, we're in our 10th year in this new ballpark. This is Citizen Bank Park, as you know. Citizen Bank is the Royal Bank of Scotland. They paid $95.7 million to put their name on this facility for 20 years. Sounds like a lot of money, but they knew where the, where the All-Star game was last night. The city stadium, they paid $400 million for that. The Phillies keep this one for themselves to entertain the heavy hitters. But regardless, all the suites are decorated exactly the same way. You see baseballs on the back of the chairs. Uh, the cushions over here are simulated bases. The Philly fanatic jumping out of a helicopter with the opening day ball over at the, uh, the vet. Um, the price varies pertaining to three things. Where it is in relation to home plate, how many years you sign up for, and the size. Many are only this big and hold 12, and others are from about this young lady and over and hold about 16. So it depends on those three things. And they run 150 dollars to $250,000 a year. Does not include food. Anyhow, well, the big difference with this one versus the vet was the vet was owned by the city of Philadelphia. And every time they wanted to do something, they literally had to go through City Hall. Now, this one is owned by the Phillies with debt service, like we all have mortgages and so forth. They have debt service, but they control its maintenance. As an example, uh, a couple of years ago, two years ago, they put in a new scoreboard, $10 million for a new scoreboard, wider angle, HTD, LCD. It is much better. It should be for $10 million, right? A uh, couple of years ago, uh, about two years into the ballpark, a lot of pitchers were complaining about cheap home runs. They moved the left field wall back five feet, up to up two feet. They lost 200 seats when they did that. So now the ballpark holds 43.5 instead of originally 43.7. Umpires go off this way. The people that sing the Star Spangled Banner, other people before the game, Dan Bakers, they make 10 million a year and they can't see the game from there. Right. We're going down in there. Oh, right. It's like from second base here, you can't see whether a guy's safe or out really from here. But it had to be pretty awesome, no matter what you were or what, in, in professional baseball, to see Ryan Howard hit a couple up there. Even, oh, yeah. even if you're a professional major leaguer, it had to be pretty, pretty awesome. Big green sign to the right. Looks like an airport control tower up there in the brick. That's the eye in the sky. That's security during the game. The radio uh, interviews are done right there on that corner because it's just a few connections. You don't need all the cameras and all that type of thing. So the radio connections are done right there. Radio after game radio interviews. Mike Schmidt, of course. A lot of people think this is Pete Rose because when he was here, he wore 14. But yes, number Jim one, Bunny. he's not in the Hall of Fame. And number two, it's Jim Bunny, yeah. who ended up being the senator from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And Richie Ashburn, of course, number one. Yes. Now, there's a couple guys in the Hall of Fame who aren't up there. Now, you'll notice there's no corners. You don't have all the veterans in this corner playing cards, all the Latinos in this corner speaking Spanish, all the left-handers in this corner <laughs> speaking left-handed. So you have more camaraderie. There's 46 cubicles. There's only 25 guys on the team. The catchers, like Carlos Ruiz, he gets an extra locker because he, uh, he has more equipment. Uh, some of the veterans get extra lockers, like Jimmy Rollins controls the music. He has a boom box in his. Chase Utley has an extra one. He's an inveterate collector. He collects everything. The players get two of everything that's given out, like back to school night, bobbleheads, and he collects that. Mm -hmm. But he's also very much an historian. I've seen some of his collections. I've seen uniforms in his locker of other teams. And when they come in town, he's get autographs. I've seen Flyers uniforms in his locker. OK, now this is the indoor batting cage. OK, we're going to be up here in a minute. This is the Diamond Club up here. And I'll show you when we get up here. These people up here have an option to look down here. It's one-way glass, so the players can't see you up there, but you can see the players down here. So here's where Charlie comes after the game to do his little critique of what happened. He sits there. An employee from the Phillies stands here and runs the press uh, conference. During the World Series, we had 500 people here from press. For those who are alone and not in twos, here's Cal, Big Beat Rudman to chant those blues. We do, to do to play more riff rock and boss belt and bebop than any rock 
jockey on a radio, got a transmitter that's a red hot spitter, bouncing music off the water like a rubber ball, guaranteed to cover all Delaware Valley. You're in the Fanavision control room. Now, if you, you were, have you been down to the field yet? Yes. Okay, so you saw the big red baseball academy thing up there on the scoreboard. That's, that is the only thing this room does, is take care of that big color scoreboard. And then down in front here, I'll get to that later, they do the other sm smaller scoreboards. But this upper level is just for Fanavision only. It doesn't go out to Sportsnet, although we do trade signals back and forth. They can see our cameras, we can see their cameras, and we borrow from each other, you know, good, good friends. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, where do they take the sh shots of the individual fans? That's our cameras. That is you. Those are our cameras. We put we put six cameras out there, four of them to cover the game, and then two handheld wireless cameras to walk around. This big, beautiful Sony switcher is is built to do an Academy Award show. It is that versatile, that expensive. We had some money, and we just decided we're going to buy the biggest and best, and we bought it, and we use it. Six figures. Mind. This the yeah, this is about this is about six hundred thousand dollars here. Well, there's if you want money, there's a nondescript looking silver and blue rack there on on the left, takes up about two thirds of that space, and that's one million dollars sitting right there. What is it? What's it do? It's the it's the uh, routing switcher that Harris Harris router on the left end rack twenty two. The uh, That's about a million dollars right there on that Harris Platinum router. That's, uh, that's the brains, the central heart of this whole operation. Every signal, every bit of video goes in there, every bit of audio goes in there. And with digital, you can have 16 channels of audio on one device. So there's a lot floating around inside there. The camera operators, or the camera control operator sits there touching up the color on the camera. We have two instant replay stations over there. And all we don't use tape anymore. Right. Tape is all gone. It's all hard drive. Yeah. This whole room is one gigantic computer. Tonight we put out a basic script for Danny for his pregame stuff, so he knows what he's saying about the marching band from uh, you know Central Bucks or wherever they come in from. All right, this is a, a place that you all know, the press box. I'm sure. I don't know if you've been to this one or not. The windows would always be open. They flip up underneath this way. Unless there's a monsoon blowing, the way the windows would be open. It's all signed seating. As you come along here, you'll probably recognize some of your friends there, MLB.com, USA Today, Doylestown Intelligencer, and so forth. As you know, they have a rule amongst themselves. They're prohibited from rooting for their team, the Phillies. They can't wear this kind of uh, garb as well. Uh, when the Phillies won the World Series, the press box custodian got on and said, okay, all you Philadelphia reporters, you can cheer now, and they all let out a whoop, and that's the, <laughs> la that's the last we heard from them. The owners, there's three primary owners, uh, one being the Giles family, uh, two being uh, Claire Betts, uh, who uh, was Betts Labs, and she sold out to General Electric, and uh, then there's the Middleton family, and they are uh, tobacco people, and the last are the Buck, they call themselves Triplay. You may remember a couple of years ago, the Phillies wore a B one year, yes. mm -hmm. and there were three brothers, and two of them died over the winter. Two of those Buck brothers died. There's one left, and they still own, they still have a fourth of the, of the action here, so to speak. So they're the four primary. They're not the four, the original ones. I think, I believe, I may be a little long here, but I think when Bill Giles put this group together, when the Carpenters wanted to sell, I think there were eight. I think there was Eugene Fitzdixon was another one, and yeah. Bob Levy was another, I believe, and so forth. So now it's just the four owners. And a few, like Dave Montgomery and a few others, have some minor share as well. <laughs>